Okay, it is 1030. So I think I am going to um, get us started this morning with a um, warm welcome to everybody joining um, us for using the read aloud the um, the why the how and importantly some free online resources that I am going to share that um, you can use to support using the read aloud in distance learning. Um, my name is Terry Geisel. I am one of the educational consultants for Carbon Lehigh Intermediate Unit. And I am joined today um, by Emily Killian, who is my colleague. Um, and also um, my assistant today, as she is going to be monitoring the chat box for me, because that will be um, our vehicle for um, asking questions or um, some problem solving if you're having trouble with the technology. So Emily is gonna kind of monitor that for us and uh, she will alert me if there are some questions that um, I may need to stop um, my presentation to address those um, questions. But I will tell you just a little story before we get started. Um, 28 years ago, when I became a consultant for the intermediate unit, our presentation delivery involved what is now a dinosaur um, or the overhead projector and transparencies. And I will never forget the staff meeting about 18 years ago when um, we were told that all of the overhead projectors were gonna be collected and that we were to begin using PowerPoint immediately for our presentations. And so you can imagine the panic, um, and I probably was the number one person to panic um, on our staff um, with you know, taking away my, my transparencies and my overhead projectors. In fact, I think we probably still have one that we hid in a closet somewhere <laughs> in the building, praying that it wouldn't be discovered. Um, but we joined together as a team of consultants and supported each other and um, you know, really did come through that um, period of time um, around that change. And so while our current situation, the magnitude, I guess, of our current situation is much greater um, than that um, decision to pull overhead projectors and, and um, transparencies, there are some similarities. And so um, we don't embrace change as educators um, really easily. And so um, this is another change and another period of time that is calling us to rise to the occasion and to support each other and join together um, with a lot of grace and probably making some mistakes. And, um, but we will um, get through this together. So um, know that, that I am certainly sharing the anxiety that everybody um, is, is feeling around this new way um, of doing business. So at this point, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop my video and share my screen which will be the PowerPoint that I will use to walk us through the content um, today. So um, hang in there with me while I make this change. See if this will work. And I'm sharing. So hopefully um, it may take a moment for your screen to switch, but I'm hoping that all of you are seeing um, my uh, PowerPoint with my opening slide using the read aloud. And um, Emily, if um, you would be able to um, put the PDF in the chat box in case some folks didn't click on that, um, that would be helpful. But the presentation for today um, was um, listed in the um, link box on CLIU Ready PD, um, where you connected to today's presentation. Um, so hopefully you were all currently muted um, using your um, slash through your microphone and I will invite you to post your questions in the chat box. 
Um, most of you are becoming more familiar with Zoom, and so it is your choice to leave your video um, on, which will show up an active picture of you, or you may put a slash through your video and then it just shows a screen with your name on it. Um, means you are still participating, um, but if you don't wish to have an active video on yourself, you can also um, slash that. Um, I would also ask that you don't click the share your screen um, button in your toolbox um, because it will be my screen that, that we are working from to move through the content. If for some reason you cannot hear me, if you could first check your device's volume to make sure your device is um, volume is turned on and at a volume that will allow you to hear me. If that doesn't work, um, please send a message to um, Emily in the chat and she'll do her best to help problem solve with audio. At the end of our session, um, there will be a link posted in the chat box that you can click on that to receive Act 48 hours for your, um, your time um, learning with us today. Okay. So I am going to try something new at this point. I'm taking a risk. Um, my Zoom advanced training is not till later this week, but I had a colleague who walked me through um, the use of a poll. So I'm going to try to launch my poll to see who all is joining us today. And so um, hopefully you will be seeing a screen that invites you to click whether you're a general educator, a special educator, a reading specialist, an administrator, consultant, or an instructional assistant. And I see many of you are um, playing with me and um, putting your responses in. I'll give everybody just a moment or two to complete that. And then I will also be able to share those results with you. So I'm going to end that polling and I'm gonna share the results so that everybody can take a look at. We've got um, many, many general educators um, with us today. So welcome to um, all of you. We have some special ed teachers. I see lots of reading specialists, um, a few consultants, and um, a big welcome to instructional assistants as well. So thank you all for participating in that poll. And I'm going to take a yay me moment because the poll actually worked and um, that that's uh, uh, we're going to celebrate those um, small um, successes as we move along. So thank you for that. Okay, so getting us started. I'm going to um, open our time together on the read aloud by reading part of a quote from a wonderful book, one of my favorite um, books, although I have so many, it's um, hard to say one favorite, but The Enchanted Hour um, has been a wonderful resource um, for me to, to read about the importance of the read aloud. The act of reading together secures people one another, creating order and connection as if we were quilt squares tacked together with threads made of stories. Wow, you know, I can't think of a better way to offer stability to our students than reading aloud to them. This book really does capture how reading aloud makes adults and children um, smarter, happier, healthier, more successful and more closely attached, even as technology pulls all of us in another direction. So I'm going to 
um, move through a few slides that I hope will anchor the read aloud in the science of reading. We know vocabulary has an important link to comprehension. Out of all of the factors that could impact reading comprehension, vocabulary accounts for over half of those factors. So what is vocabulary? Vocabulary is the knowledge of and memory for word meanings. We grow vocabulary in three ways, through speaking and listening, through reading, and through writing. And we do that um, in the classroom, both directly by teaching direct vocabulary words, but also indirectly um, through our teacher talk, through our read alouds, and um, through fostering word consciousness with our students. What vocabulary is not are all the words that our students can name or read in print. Because one of the things we need to understand is that decoding doesn't guarantee knowing word meanings, right? Um, when our students are um, proficient decoders, um, they can read um, many, many words, but we cannot assume that they will also know what all of those words mean. We understand that better by looking at some of the phases that our um, readers go through. And that beginning phase, we understand that our students know more word meanings than they can read. And we have been feeding and building their oral vocabulary since birth. And we understand that from birth through age nine, we learn most words by listening. So we have a wonderful opportunity as educators to take advantage of the fact that our students are like sponges and soaking up all of the words that we are sharing um, with them. And so the read aloud is going to offer a wonderful opportunity to really expose them to so many different um, vocabulary words, as well as the complexity um, of sentence structure because that is another factor that we know will aid our students in their comprehension. And then as we see in the later phase, things flip. After solid decoding skills are in place, our students are gonna read many more printed words without understanding their meanings. I have to say, this is really quite strange as a presenter. If you all could see me, if I, if I was letting you see me, I'm still using my hands, I'm moving, I'm doing like you are my audience in front of me. So I really hope that Zoom can break some of those barriers and that you feel um, very much a part of and included um, in this presentation. So moving on to looking at how we can support vocabulary um, learning. The rate of vocabulary words that our students need to learn that is truly necessary to keep up with the comprehension demands. Okay, so I'm gonna say that again. The rate of vocabulary learning that our students need to engage in to keep up with the demands of comprehension means that our students are going to have to read. They need to be active readers. They need to be read to, and they need to be talked to often. Nani Lasso, who was a researcher out of Harvard, did some research and discovered that vocabulary matters just as much as teacher talk matters. Through our teacher talk, we can elevate 
the vocabulary that our students are exposed to. So our students need to hear our voices in our interactions through Zoom or Google Classroom. They need to be read too. And so we have an opportunity to use the read aloud as a powerful tool to grow their vocabulary. And of course, as we always would, encourage them to do their reading. So distance learning really does allow us to address all three of these areas with our students. I want to take a moment to talk about the importance of um, reading aloud. The next two slides I really did um, um, pull from and draw from reading Rocket, as well as um, Isabel Beck um, out of the University of Pitt who has done a great deal of work around um, um, vocabulary instruction with um, all students and importantly, our um, ESL students and just how um, critical um, the um, importance of read aloud and vocabulary development is with our ESL students. So we know that reading aloud is the foundation for literacy development. The second bullet really talks about it is the single most important activity for reading success. And I always share with teachers that the read aloud is the one thing that should never be eliminated from your lesson plan, no matter what. And that means a late start and early dismissal. And, and in this situation during a school closure, we don't want to eliminate that read aloud from our lesson plan, from our um, uh, period of time that we might be engaged online um, with our um, children. Please keep the read aloud as part of your lesson plan. By reading aloud, we do role model for our students what fluent reading sounds like. That understanding around prosody that we are reading with expression and with regard to punctuation. That role model for our students is really quite powerful and very important. Reading aloud is also like a gift that keeps on giving because it, it allows our students to see the benefits and the rewards of reading. And it really will develop their interest in books and their desire to become a proficient reader. And I had um, come upon this list as well from Isabel Beck, that while a few of the bullets are repeated, it was worth um, including in my PowerPoint because there are some additional ones that I think I wanna draw our attention too. So we know that a benefit of a read aloud um, is that it will develop stronger vocabulary because our children will acquire language primarily through listening, that research around birth to age nine. We also have an opportunity to grow and increase their background knowledge which we know is, again, a growing problem with our students not um, having the depth in background knowledge that we need them to have. So depending on the read aloud we choose, it also is an opportunity um, to, to grow and develop background knowledge. Um, another um, plug for a book I could recommend um, would be Natalie Wexler's book called The Knowledge Gap. She devotes an entire book to that understanding around background knowledge and how important that is um, in order for our students to make inferences. Background knowledge is the key to students being able to make inferences. Without background knowledge, that um, process of inference making will fall short for so many of our students. 
We also know that the read aloud is going to build connections between the spoken and written word. It's that bridge that allows our students to identify with a word that they have heard in their oral vocabulary for maybe a number of years. And all of a sudden we are now going to connect it to the written word or the word that is in print. I would also like to point out the last two bullets on this slide where um, we know that the, the read aloud um, is going to provide a safe way of exploring strong emotions. And in this pandemic and school closure, um, I believe so many of our students are um, experiencing swirling emotions. Um, their schedule has been um, abruptly um, interrupted um, and um, their, their um, predictable routines are, are now, um, um, you know, really um, blown apart. And so they're really trying to um, gain some, some balance back into um, their world. And so again, choosing some um, books may also allow our students to recognize that, you know, what they are feeling is quite normal and their reactions are um, very similar to our reactions um, as adults. So I think the, the self-care aspect around um, certain read-alouds, again, um, is going to invite our students um, to really be able to um, feel their emotions and be able to talk about them and know that they are, um, are, are normal. And then um, the last bullet there, the, the promotes bonding between the reader and the listener. And um, we can't underestimate the power of that bond, especially um, at this time when so many of our students um, may be feeling um, that lack of connection with the caring adults um, who um, are have been in their 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 Monday through Friday, eight thirty to three thirty um, world. So um, really, um, please understand the importance of that bonding. As we look um, at some of the research behind um, reading aloud, um, it, it's interesting to note that children's books, especially those that are, are well written, will open up um, the worlds of knowledge, that background knowledge beyond what a child's immediate experience um, is. And the, the language is, is so much richer for them than any other child-focused source. Um, we know that um, from a really important study that was um, done that, that really showed well-written children's books are better resources for learning new words than TV, which I'm sure is not a surprise for most of us, but it's also a better resource than the conversation with educated adults. So um, the key there obviously is um, selecting um, a, a well-written um, children's book. I'm not sure that maybe Diary of a Wimpy Kid um, um, falls in to place there, but um, really looking at um, books like Make Way for Ducklings is an oldie but a goodie in terms of the, um, the vocabulary that is introduced in it, as well as the sentence complexity. So as we consider selecting read alouds, um, we know that it, it truly is um, imperative that we engage our students with um, text um, reading from well-written um, um, books. Many of our students are gonna de be dependent on these experiences in order to hear um, academic language. We know that academic language or standard English is very different from conversational um, language. Um, in conversational language, we use about 350 um, words. We just change the syntax or we change the order of those 350 um, words. 
many of our children now at home are likely hearing a lot of that business talk again or routine talk again. Um, did you make your bed? Did you clean up after breakfast? Did you brush your teeth? Um, it's almost 10 o'clock. Your teacher's going to be meeting with you. Sit down and get ready. All of that business talk um, that's important to get things done, but it um, is a departure from that academic language and specialized vocabulary that we know is quite necessary for our students to develop their expressive language pathways, for them to really um, connect to and plug into reading comprehension, and then to be able to take that and then become a writer. All of those pathways connect for our students. And so that read aloud is um, a, a really, um, great opportunity for us to continue to expose our students to those um, two underlined pieces there of academic language and specialized vocabulary. Mark Seidenberg talks about read alouds. Um, he certainly is a reading researcher, but he suggests to us that reading books is just not enough and the quality of those books matters. Now, I understand and recognize that we're at home now as educators and we don't have access to a library full of books or even our classroom um, full of books, but we, we do need to think about the books that we are choosing and um, to make sure that um, they are worthy of being used as a read aloud, that we are going to be able to um, generate um, discussion and around vocabulary words and around um, sentence structure. Um, the opportunity for us to lift a sentence out of a book that we are reading aloud to students and break that sentence apart and talk to students about the the roles that the words play in that sentence and why the order of the words in that sentence matters for comprehension so again the read aloud is going to allow us to lift some sentences and that will take some planning on your part as you are pre-reading your read aloud pull out a couple of vocabulary words lift a couple of sentences and be um, kind of prepared to talk about those vocabulary words and um, those, those sentences that you have selected as um, ones that, that are worthy of um, further um, um, instruction on um, your part. Emily, how are we doing? Are there any questions or comments that um, we could take a break at this point and consider. Uh, well, I'm having an interesting, a, a good conversation with Leslie, who is a music teacher. And she's talking about using read alouds to incorporate rhythm and singing books. And I said, that sounds great. And there's tons of books out there that would really lend themselves to that. So if you have any additional, I, I suggested pulling out some vocabulary perhaps after you've read or sang a book with students? Yep, absolutely. And just inviting <clears throat> um, students to be part of, if Leslie, you could even develop a bit of a cadence um, and, and, you know, a way to communicate that rhythm through, you know, either, um, you know, a hand clap or, you know, a tap that kids really can feel the rhythm of that story would really bring to life um, some of the, the musicality of, of, of what you would, would be wanting to achieve there. Um, when I get to the online resources, I'll point out for you, um, for everybody, but Leslie in particular, um, there's one where they have a, an audible of the wheels on the bus 
and it actually is sung in the read aloud. So there, there really may be opportunities for you to tap into some of those um, online resources as well as to um, develop your own. Great, great conversation. Anything else, Emily, before I talk about some of the guidelines? No, that's, uh, <clears throat> that's good. And then also, uh, I'll just throw in one little thing that I listen to personally with my own children on Audible. And I know Terry's going to get there, but Audible right now is free for uh, children or for everyone, but it's children's books that are free. Um, and there's one that comes up right away when you look at the free Audible site, it's called Storytime. And if you don't have capabilities of showing a story or the pictures to your students, Storytime is um, storytellers from around the world, or I guess they speak English, but um, mostly, you know, I, I don't know, from around the world, telling stories from around the world. And many of them are set to a beat and set to music and they're so, so wonderful. So that's something that you may wanna look into as well. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks um, for that, that, those thoughts. Okay, so I'm going to move us into um, <clears throat> just a, a, a look at a, a read aloud guideline. Um, reading aloud from books that are slightly above um, our students instructional reading level is what's recommended and we kind of call them stretch books because the stretch book will really stimulate um, our students' language comprehension. And it also increases their stamina for listening. We live in a world now with um, digital influences that um, um, there is such speed um, that children get reinforced and see um, graphics and, and see visuals that um, we, we have lost a bit of um, their stamina for sitting and listening. And so um, stretch books offer us that opportunity um, for them to develop um, their stamina um, for listening. And Jim Trelease reminds us that a child's reading level doesn't catch up to his or her listening level until eighth grade. Again, that makes sense because their oral language development gets a running head start to their um, reading level with all of that oral language that we are exposing them to and bathing them to um, from, from birth th um, and beyond. And so the, the reading level doesn't catch up to listening level until eighth grade. So you can and should be reading above grade level. So for example, we would read seventh grade level books to fifth graders. So about two grade levels above your student's reading level would be considered a stretch book. And so they will get really excited about the plot and this will become motivation for them to keep reading. So um, we wanna think about um, for certainly this closure and then beyond when we get back to business as usual in our schools, um, tuck away that, that nugget of understanding that, you know, read alouds, um, you know, we, we really can um, push our kids a bit um, beyond what is at their, their reading level. Okay, that okay with everybody, Emily? No questions on that? You're mic. You're not mic'd. Sorry. I, I did have one question about sharing a little bit more on the Audible, so I'm looking into that right now to share the link with everyone. Okay, I do. I think Audible is on my my link in in um, two slides. Yep, Audible Stories .audible .com. I'm going to get there and I'll yeah, take everybody it. right to it. So Perfect. we're going to spend some time um, actually going into some of the online resources. So Great. that everybody can take a look at what's there and Emily, I'll invite you to jump in at that point, because while I have a, um, 
a 23 year old at home and a 28 year old at home through the closure. Um, we, we aren't quite exploring some of the, um, the, the free resources I'm going to be sharing with everybody. Um, so we'll get there um, right after this next slide. So um, we are going to um, visit with um, Dr. Maria Murray. She is the CEO and president of the Reading League that is based out of Syracuse, New York. And um, Dr. Murray is going to give us some advice on recording read alouds. So if you are considering as a teacher um, recording yourself doing a read aloud for your students and then sharing that recording as part of your um, online distance learning, um, Dr. Murray has some um, advice for us. So I'm um, gonna take us to that. Okay, so I'll have Emily give me a thumbs up if the volume works. Hi everybody, my name is Maria Murray and I wanted to make a little bit of a video here for you to talk about how we can better uh, or how we can maximize how we do read alouds and to ensure that children really attend to the oral language and the beautiful stories that we read to them. So this is for people who are teachers for when they do read alouds when they get back in the classroom or for people who are in uh, the days of this quarantine, uh, making some great read aloud videos for children to watch at home. So uh, children's books are an, a treasure trove of beautiful language, um, rich vocabulary. I think they rank um, out of a thousand words, they rank 31 of those words are rare, beautiful words like uh, coax and confuse and stagnant and creep. All of those beautiful words that we don't usually use when we have conversations, they're in children's books. So we want children to learn that vocabulary, to hear it, to attend to it. And also part of becoming a sex successful reader is um, constructing meaning text. So we want to maximize children's listening to the words we say in these beautiful read alouds. So I just have a few books here and as I pass through them and I'm going to be doing some read aloud videos using these favorites of mine. I mean, just look at how gorgeous these illustrations are, right? Uh, find that often the illustrations can impede um, comprehension and listening. So they might mislead. Sometimes the illustrations even mislead children to incorrect understandings of what's happening in the text. Um, so uh, if you want some homework, you can get this article online if you Google it. It's called um, Text Talk Capturing the Benefits of Read Aloud Experiences for Young Children. It tells you how to uh, ask questions during a read aloud. It tells you how to pay attention to vocabulary during read aloud. But one thing people don't know uh, is on pages 16 and 17, and um, when you get to, oh, I don't think it's page 16 and 17. Oops, hold on a second. Aha, yeah, I'm right. P pages 16 and 17, my glasses are up here. I'm not using them here. <laughs> page 16 and 17, it talks about the pictures and how they can interfere with meaning. So what Beck and McEwen did um, and this is from Reading Teacher. They're reading, uh, Beck and McEwen are famous for their good work with vocabulary and oral language. They explain how they learned that if they delay showing the illustrations so that it doesn't interfere with oral language, they had children who could much better um, construct meaning from that language. So I'll give you a one a second example. Here's how we always see teachers um, reading books. Yes, they're holding the book. I got to sit back a little bit. They hold the book away from themselves and read it. And so children are looking at all these cool pictures and probably tuning you out. Hopefully they aren't, but chances are they do. So one thing you can do is say, do this. You 
read it to them like this. The monsters grew more and more suspicious. They slunk about, depressed, accusing each other of planting the fire foil their paradise. My God, listen to those words. Suspicious, slunk, depressed, accusing, spite, and paradise. That one sentence had about six or seven delicious words. So, after I read it, <clears throat> then I show the picture. And I say to the children, ooh, look at that. They're slinking about. What does it mean if you slink around? Um, so, you can choose some of those pictures to talk about the vocabulary. I'm going to do one more page. I'll just pick one randomly here. From cursing and blaming, scratching and shoving, they took to serious fighting, and all their deepest demons tore loose. Much as they had loathed one another before, it was nothing to how they loathed now, but it no longer gave them pleasure. And then I show this picture that's just filled, filled, filled with crazy, exciting things happening, and now they get a chance to enjoy that picture, but they've already listened to it, too. If I show this picture and read those words, what do you think some of our kids are going to do? They're going to be staring at this fire and this the, the mean-looking monsters and all those colors. They're not going to be paying attention to my words. So if you do a read-aloud during this epidemic time, thank you, you think, but consider turning the book to yourself reading the page, and then showing the picture. It's an easy task. It's an easy way to up the oral language and get some more evidence-aligned practice out of it. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Hi, everybody. My name is Okay, so um, really great advice by um, Dr. Um, Murray there, and um, I, I think it would be wonderful um, to do a lot of um, reading your own stories and, and recording um, them for your students. But in addition to that, there are um, a lot of free um, online um, that that you um, can also take advantage of. Um, and so I'm going to take us um, to some of those um, with the, the 10, 15 minutes that we have left together here. And so I'm going to jump right to that audible, um, stories.audible. And let's take a look at um, what we have here. So um, stories help, they entertain, they teach. And you can go right into Start Listening. And you can see um, all of the, the um, choices there for littlest listeners, folk and fairy tales, um, for elementary, for tweens, and also for um, teenagers. And um, you can, can scroll through um, all of those um, choices. This was the one, Leslie, that I was um, mentioning here. Um, this actual book, there's 22 fun songs in um, The Wheels on the Bus. Um, and um, they're, they're just, they're, they're done quite well. And um, let's see. Um, Maybe let's listen to um, Beatrice Potter. This is Audible. Tantor Audio presents Timeless Tales of Beatrix Potter, Peter Rabbit and Friends by Beatrix Potter, narrated by Catherine Kelgren. The Tale of Peter Rabbit. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in the sand bank and... Okay, so you kind of get the point there. They're the the um, folks who are doing the recordings are um, their articulation and their diction is, is um, really quite um, well done and offers um, um, just uh, an opportunity for our kids to be able to, to listen to all of that oral language. 
Emily, you have any jump ins there? Uh, yeah, well, Story Party, the one next to Beatrix Potter is the one that I was talking about that is really engaging for students. Oh, when you Got do. it. Yep, and that Winnie the Pooh right next to that is also a favorite at our house and it incorporates um, different voices and a lot yes. of song. It's precious, truly precious. It's lovely, lovely. Um, I will say I've been trying to kind of wrap my brain around the audible piece because it doesn't lend itself quite as well as some of the other resources that Terry's mm -hmm. going to share um, for teachers to assign actual books so that your whole class is listening to the same thing. Um, but I, I think that it would take some thought in how you wanted to assign students to listen to things. You might have to. Um, because you can't just like assign a chapter. So if you were doing maybe a middle school teacher and you're doing Anne of Green Gables, you're like, wow, it's free, this is great. We've been wanting to do this. It's, you know, some classic literature, um, but kind of figuring out how you're going to keep track of where your students are and what they're doing. So it's a great resource. And I definitely think that, you know, it's worth using and looking at, but I, I am also interested, Terry, to see some of your other resources, because I yep. think that they're easier for maybe teachers to use. Yep, I got it. So I'm gonna take us to Story on Storyline Online, which um, is just, oh, wow. I, I don't know. I mean, this one just blows, blows my mind in terms of, um, what's on here, they, they feature books by the month. They're adding, especially given our situation now, they're adding um, books um, every day. Again, this is another free resource. Um, you know, for instance, so The Tooth here is going to be read by um, Anne Benning, Annette Benning, and, you know, it, they're just beautifully done. by Avi Sladovnik and illustrated by Manon Gautier. Marissa's love of candy finally caught up with her. Mm. That morning, she woke up with a toothache and instead of bringing her to school, her mother took her to the dentist. Marissa didn't often go downtown. Columns of tall gray buildings cast great shadows across the streets. The sky, usually bright, and blue was barely visible between the rows of endlessly tall skyscrapers. Marissa and her mother walked hand in hand toward the dentist's office. Men and women wearing long coats and long faces, their collars up and their heads down, rushed in every direction. Marissa leaned closer to her mother. When the so you see, you see the difference in, um, you know, just the the um, the completeness of of that, where they're seeing the words, they're seeing the pictures. It's active movement, um, so it it really um, is going to draw students, um, you know, to that to that screen. Um, and so that those are just so well so well done that um, that would be one I would definitely highlight. Emily, you have any other thoughts there? Uh, no, Storyline Online is wonderful. And, and a lot of people in the chat agree. So that's- <laughs> They that's like that cool. one. <laughs> so, uh, there's, there's other ones too that are, that are really nice as well. Yeah, so, um, you know, th they're all going to be on here for you to um, really take take a look at. Um, how about I go here? Um, this is another one where it, it's actually Kate Messner's um, um, website and, um, you know, she offers down here resources um, by grade level that you can, you know, connect to, um, you know, again, you know, grades three through five. Let's see if I can get it to take us there. Um, so intermediate grades. Um, and so she, she really, um, let's see. 
here. Someday is now. And again, you're, you, you know, you're going to have to play with and take a look at. But Hi, I'm Olubemi Sola Rude Perkovich, and I'm the author of a few books like Eighth Grade Super Zero. Um, I'm the co-author of a couple of books called Two Naomi's and Naomi's Two with my friend Audrey Vernick. And a few other books, including this picture book biography called Someday is Now, Clara Looper and the 1958 Oklahoma City Sit-Ins. Okay. So I'm going to pull out of, out of there, but, you know, again, you know, kind of sky, sky is the limit if you're, you know, willing to, to, you know, play around on some of the, um, uh, the links here. Story Nori is um, really another um, free um, one um, that, that you can um, do search for stories, um, free um, audio uh, books on here. Um, you can go right to the, the story. So there's um, several, you know, links, um, again, to, to, um, to consider. Okay, and did you, did you want me to highlight further in there, Em? No, I'm answering a question though. Uh, teachers are talking about and sharing with each other which um, resources you can push out or assign to your students. So uh, when I was looking for all of these resources, one that I didn't include because I felt a lot of teachers already were aware of it, but I should have included it because it's such a great resource, um, is getepic.com. Uh, so it's, you know, Epic, which I'm sure a lot of you have heard of. Right now, Epic is free for everyone until June 30th. And it is, in my opinion, and I haven't really played around too much with Storyline Online, so I don't know if there are ways to push those stories out to your students and um, do assignments with them. But Epic does allow you to create your class. You can import classes very easily, especially if you're using um, Google Classroom. You can just import your whole class and then you can push those stories out to your students. You can assign stories to them. And it also includes some like quizzes and activities at the end of each story. And it's a lot like Storyline Online, maybe not quite as interactive with the moving pictures, but it's read alouds where um, they're going through the book page by page and um, and and doing that. So Get Epic, I put it in the chat, is a really nice resource that's similar to the storyline online that everybody loves so much, including me. Uh, yeah, and there, there is one, Emily, on, um, I was going to go to We Are Teachers, but, you know, um, that that is, um, uh, an, uh, a resource that will take you to links that I'm already sharing. So if you've been to We Are Teachers, it might take you to a Storyline Online book that's been um, 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 recorded and, and taped. So th that is another one that um, we just got from many of these resources. Um, we have um, um, built on these two slides from Dr. Pam Kastner, who is the Patton um, State Literacy Lead. And so um, all of them have been vetted um, and have been checked out to be aligned with um, a lot of the, the, the understandings in the, the science of reading. So they are really ones that you um, can trust in terms of um, of your um, your use of them, but Brightly Storytime has online books and assignments. Yes, that that are right there. So let's take a quick peek. Um, and um, so reading through it together, resources and activities to use while kids are um, at home. 
Um, and so, um, you know, you, you can, you, you know, really um, dive in there in terms of coming up with some um, assignments and printables and activities that um, are, are part of some of the, the books that have been um, picked here. Okay. And that includes all of the, um, not maybe not all of them, but a lot of like the magic treehouse books are yes. included on this one. And the activities, um, if you haven't learned how to use Google Slides to create your worksheets for your students, I believe that the IU is putting on another webinar talking about how to use Google Slides for all of these great resources that we're finding, but they're all these worksheets that we can't print for our students at this time. And so there's an easy way to create a Google Slide that allows your students to write on um, the slide as if it were the worksheet itself. So please um, take advantage of those webinars that the IU is offering. Yeah, and, and these, Marley. yeah, and these couple bullets here, are really would be wonderful and links with your parents. Um, again, um, really um, checked out to be safe, secure um, sites, but this one in particular, um, really fun activities for parents to do with their children. So that would absolutely be a, a link that I would somehow want to offer to my parents, um, both of these um, links. But this link here, Actively Learn, um, is a, another opportunity that has articles with interactive questions and quizzes that it um, has now been designated as a free resource for the remainder um, of the school year. So um, I would like to, to take us there, um, you know, to take a, a look at, so there are essential questions, um, um, the the um, piece on 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 uh, Kobe Bryant, and you can see there are assignment directions, extra help text summary, and you can incorporate polls um, with your students to allow them to um, be part of. And then here is the actual article. Um, um, for them uh, to engage in and, and, and read. So, you know, some very high interest things. And then here is another question too. Why is the author of this article a credible source? So again, um, you know, the opportunity for, for you to um, build in, um, you know, some, some assignments that the, the work is almost done for you um, in terms of, of, the, of the questions and the support for some of those um, answers. So that, um, that I suggest also there as that um, last bullet on that um, free online um, resource. Okay. All right. And then um, also just um, uh, wanted to, to put a plug in there for Jim Trelease's um, um, read aloud handbook um, that was uh, the, the most, the eighth edition there was released in September of 2019. Then that would be, you know, another good um, resource for um, for you. And I've put his website as well there that you, um, you know, can can get some additional um, information um, as well. So as we begin to close up here um, for our hour, um, I wanted to share one final quote from the Enchanted Hour um, with everyone. So here is a reader, a book, a listener. The sound of the voice exists for a moment and then it vanishes. Like birdsong, it's gone, it is over yet it leaves traces of its passage in the imagination and memory of those who listen. There is incredible power in this fugitive exchange. We certainly are um, in a very challenging period of time here in education. And um, Emily and I um, both um, understand the, the, the anxiety and kind of the daunting task in front of us. 
but um, we certainly ask for in the time that you are given with your students um, the opportunity and the benefit of designating um, the read aloud as being part of your instructional um, block with them really is is not just a fun activity while it is that it is so much more than that and we we really um, hope that that you um, have been able to pick up some resources and some tips on how to use that resource um, um, two slides that we have or how to actually develop um, your own. And so I will show you what the exit ticket looks like. Emily will post that link in the chat. Um, but I'll show you there. It, it is an exit ticket that asks you for your first name, your last name, your PPID, they are saying is not required. Um, but if you have it, um, it makes it a lot easier um, for you to get the credit, your school district, and the title of today's session, and then a little bit of um, the um, your thoughts and feedback on the session itself. So that will be in um, the chat box for you. Um, this session will be, hopefully was being recorded, and will be available on the recorded tab um, on the CLIU Ready PD page. Um, I understand it takes um, uh, a day or so for that to appear there, but um, that will be available for a rewatch or if you wish to share that um, with any colleagues. So I guess I would also, um, um, my email address and Emily's email address is posted um, on this slide in your PowerPoint as well. Um, Emily and I are designating um, time every day um, as um, literacy support office hours. So we will be um, available um, for you to um, send us some questions and, and we certainly can consult with you or problem solve with you um, as you are um, um, involved in, um, in, in delivering some instruction at least for um, the next month, if not longer. So Emily, are there um, any further questions that, um, that we um, should address before we um, end our meeting. Uh, so they want, they're asking to share the PowerPoint as a PowerPoint and not a PDF. I think that people are maybe having trouble getting into some of the resources that we shared, but I'd like to, before, uh, I don't know how you feel about that. So before you commit to that, I did create that um, resources page that Terry pulled from to show you those resources. I have a Google slideshow with uh, quite a few more resources that I'm happy to share with everyone. Okay. Yeah, so I'm, I'm fine with, 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 with sharing how in whatever way we need to do that. Um, getting everybody the resources and the ease with which you can access them is is important so um i'm fine with that being posted in the in the chat box yeah so i'm gonna include just, uh, just don't sell it to anybody okay yeah or you know please make a copy of it as well i'm gonna put it in the chat box right now let me make okay. sure that i have it uh, uh, the settings kind of created so that you can get into it because i'm gonna get you know um lots of permission to access, I think. But let me let me give it to you and see if I can get that kind of going. Okay. And if anybody else has any any other questions, I certainly would invite you to open your mic um, and and present those those questions if that makes it um, a little bit easier at this time as well. I know some of my frustration with the chat box is that very quickly you can lose um, that link because of additional chats being posted. So um, if anybody has any questions, we'll take them at this time. Um, if not. If you click on that exit ticket in the chat, does it take you out of the meeting then or? Yes. So you're allowed. So after we hang up, which you are free to go whenever, um, 
it will take you out. It's a Google Doc. And so you'll put the name of the session, you'll put your PPID number, it will ask you a couple of questions, and then it's being sorted. It's kind of going into a bigger database of all of our webinars. So you will be leaving the session to do the exit ticket. Yeah, and I'll make sure, Jesse, that before I end the meeting, that I give you everybody an opportunity to pop into that link, if that makes sense. Oh, okay, all right. Okay, so um, does anybody have any questions or um, thoughts for the, the good of the group to hear at this time? Emily, I have a question. Um, if I want to save that link that you gave me, not the exit ticket, but the one with uh, your resources on it, how do I do that from the chat room? If you well, I'm trying to, and you know, maybe one of you can help me. Anyone with the link can access. Let me change that right now. It makes it tricky for us at the um, IU. There we go. Anyone with the link can access. Let me see. If you want to try again, if you want to click that link again and let me know if you were able to oh there oh yeah <laughs> that worked there's lots of you in here now so um if you make a copy and save it then i would i'm happy to share it with you i did a webinar earlier this week that i didn't um record and i'm kind of glad i didn't because it was not so do i copy it just by hitting the download button so yeah. once you're in to the um slideshow if you push file and you say make a copy and put entire presentation okay. and then it will make a copy into your um if you have a google account it should save that into your drive if you don't have a google account you could download it as a microsoft powerpoint if that's what you're used to using or as a pdf document and as you can see that towards the end is where all of the read alouds that Terry went over today are located. But at the beginning, there's some things for, you know, phonemic awareness activities, phonics, decodables. Um, there's just so many resources right now that it's all very overwhelming, so. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. Any other questions? So if not, um, we thank you so much for spending an hour of your um, day with us and allowing us to reinforce um, just how important the um, read aloud is. So before I end the meeting, Jesse, I'll give you an opportunity to, to uh, click on that link to get to okay. the, um, the uh, uh, exit ticket. Okay. And Emily, thank you so much for your support, assistance, and contributions um, today. Yeah, and I look forward to hopefully hearing from any of you with any questions you have. And Great job. Thank you both so much. Okay. Have a good day, everybody. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Keep washing your hands. Thanks thank so you. much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Okay. Bye.